Hi, I'm Richard McPherson. I'm the Chief Instructor at Let's Ride Motorcycle Training. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you the Module 1 Emergency Stop. So after your control stopping exercise, we move on to the emergency stop. Now this is where we do have minimum speed requirements. So in the control stopping exercise, the examiner would have suggested the speed around about 19, 20. But this time he's gonna explain that you're gonna go around the corner at a similar kind of speed, but you have to achieve at least 30 miles per hour through the speed trap here. So another thing to remember is that they measure everything in kilometers per hour, which is a consequence of being in the EU. Uh, so it's EU guidelines, it has to be a kilometer per hour readout. Now that may change uh, after a Brexit. We don't know that yet, but their gizmo will always read out kilometers per hour. But our speedos read in miles per hour. Now we did ask if we could change our speedos to kilometers per hour, because it's dead easy on the new electronic panels. You just press a button and it's kilometers per hour. But bizarrely, you're not allowed. How nuts is that? So your speedo has to be in miles per hour, although the examiner will be registering everything in kilometers per hour. So he's gonna talk about a target speed of 50 kilometers per hour. So that's, that's the minimum speed to pass the exercise without gaining a fault. You can go fractionally lower than that and get away with it with a minor fault. So 48 or 49 kilometers per hour, you get a fault, but that's still fine, you'll still pass. So that equates to about 30, 31 miles per hour. Now on the first attempt, you get two attempts at the emergency stop and the, the swerve maneuver if you've gone a little bit slow. So on the first attempt, if you've gone uh, less than 48 kilometers per hour, he'll show you what speed that you achieved using his little gizmo. He'll remind you what you have to achieve and then you get a second attempt. So this time you must achieve at least 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour uh, to pass, okay? There's no upper limit, although that's, that's not a challenge. There's no upper limit, but the minimum your, your speedo should be reading for this is 30 miles per hour with a target of at least 32. So we'll go around the same circuit that you've done on the control stop exercise. So do the, the 180 degree corner around about 19, 20 miles per hour keep it in second gear and then as you come off the corner accelerate and you want to be hitting at least 30 miles per hour by the time you get to the speed trap here so ideally a little bit further back you want to be hitting that speed and what will happen is the examiner pretty much that the second your front wheel comes out of the speed trap he'll be standing right down the other end of the testing area he'll stick his hand up like that and you stop as quickly as you can under control as if in an emergency so just remember how we do this, it goes back to the CBT. Let's throttle off, a little bit of front brake to load that front suspension, load that front tire, a little bit of back brake, and you must use both brakes for this exercise. You squeeze that front nice and hard, and then if you can remember just to pull that clutch in to stop the bike from stalling, although it doesn't really matter, which I'll talk to you a bit more in depth when I do a demonstration in just a moment. Now, in terms of stopping distances, what can you get away with? Well, it does vary. It depends on how fast that you're going. I mean, if you're doing the minimum speed, you could probably get away with stopping halfway between the speed trap and the box of blue cones down at the end. If you go faster than that, they'll allow a bit of extra distance. Likewise, if it's really wet on the day, they'll allow a little bit of extra stopping distances as well. But don't be shy. Once that front tire is loaded, you've got stacks and stacks of grip, not to mention pretty much all bikes now have got anti-lock brakes. All the bikes that we use, use have, have ABS on them. Uh, and don't be afraid to use that. I'm often asked, does it matter if the ABS helps you on this exercise? And the answer to that is no, it really doesn't. Uh, the technology can help, it's not a problem. So, I mean, you could just smack the brakes on as hard as you like here. Although I wouldn't suggest that. That is not the way we learn or teach how to do an emergency stop. Uh, but you could just do that on an ABS bike and let the technology sort it all out. Now there is a big danger with that, that particular method is that if you put too much load on the front, the back end of the bike can literally raise up into the air and that's actually a fail. So to be careful, you don't need to stand the bike on its nose to pass this exercise. All right, so it's a quick stop under control. So in terms of stopping distance, you've got quite a bit more space than you might think. Now, obviously we want to be stopping as quickly as we can. So where I'm standing now, you can't see it on the video camera, but up there, Another 10 meters up there is the speed trap, which you should be going at least 30 miles per hour through. Then 10 meters further down, just here, you've got some red cones. And then all the way down on the left-hand side of the screen there, you can see the two blue cones at the end of the testing area. So how far can we get away with? Well, 
when I demonstrate this to you, I should be stopping around about here. Now that is an exceptionally good stop, if I don't mind saying so myself, uh, but you don't need to stop them this quickly. I just wanted to show you what the bike is certainly capable of doing. In fact, it could probably stop quicker than this. Uh, but this is the kind of target area that I'm looking at uh, just to show you how good modern day brakes are. But how far can we go and get away with it? Well, let's keep going. Providing you're doing the minimum speed of uh, 30 miles per hour, then we could probably get away with around about here. So that is about halfway between your final set of red cones and the blue cones at the end of the testing center. Okay, now any further than this, the examiner needs to make a decision. I mean, this is a lazy stop. I mean, honestly, I could stop this quickly with just the back brake. So with both brakes, we should be stopping way quicker than this. But this is your fail zone. Certainly any further than this, then you're probably going to fail this exercise. That being said, if you've gone like a bat out of hell down the testing site and you've gone through that speed trap, let's say 40, 45 miles per hour, which I have seen, then yes, he will allow you that extra stopping distance. You know, I have seen people stop down here, but they've gone so fast through that speed trap. The examiner's taken that into account. Okay, so that's worth bearing in mind. But if you're, if you're hitting near about the target speed of 32 miles per hour slash 50 kilometers per hour, then we'd be looking around about this area here. So plenty of room to stop, no problem at all. Okay, so we've come off the corner at 20, accelerate, at least 30, roll off, front brake, back brake, and stop. Don't worry about gears and clutch after. So we come off the corner at 20, accelerate, get to at least 32, the hand goes up, throttle goes off, bit of front brake, bit of back brake, squeeze the front nice and hard, and if you can remember, bring that clutch in, stop the engine from stalling. On the subject of a stall, don't worry too much on this exercise. They really don't give a monkeys if you stall or not on this exercise, because let's face it, it's an emergency. You know, a car's pulled, pulled out straight in front of you. The last thing you're worrying about is keeping an engine running. It's all about stopping as quickly and as safely as possible. So you'd wait for the examiner's hand to go up, you throttle down, get onto the front brake first, a little bit of back brake, and then squeeze that front nice and hard, pull the clutch in, and then stop. Okay, and that's the emergency stop exercise.